Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. This is the start of a March vlog. I'm hoping to vlog a lot for middle grade March. Today is March 1st. Welcome to the beginning of the vlog. I just finished a young adult book, which I wanted to finish before March started, but it took a little bit of the morning to do, and that was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I think I liked it, but I didn't really love it, and I don't know if I'm gonna continue on in the series. I feel like I would have really, really enjoyed it when I was younger. I can't be bothered by like YA romances sometimes. And now I'm gonna go to the kindergarten that I go to on Fridays, for the next few weeks and then we're gonna be back in our building so i'm not gonna go anymore to go do a story time i do two back to back like 30 minutes back to back um so i'm like singing for an hour and it'll be really fun this week my theme is farm animals so i'm gonna read really fun books and then after that i'm going to the library i have to drop off all these things but i'm so excited because my hold for kid gloves by lucy nicely her new graphic memoir is out and i'm so freaking excited i think that's like the first thing i'm going to read sorry it has nothing to do with middle grade march but i need to read that this weekend i'll catch up with you later meanwhile mr sam's gonna protect the household while i'm gone right sam you're gonna protect us my story time's over and I came back to my apartment. I picked up a package of boots and I'm really excited. I hope that they look really nice um, and I'm gonna go see my doggy. It's been a couple hours, maybe a few hours since I last updated. I'm done with my work day finally and now I can start middle grade March. So here, oh well let me, let me, let me flip this around. Here are the things that I'm considering. This is the group read. And there's no audiobook, so I have to read that. I think I'm going to start with the audiobook of Song for a Whale. So this is a story about a girl who is deaf, and she is traveling, road tripping, to find this whale who hasn't been able to communicate, and she thinks that she can help it communicate. Okay, I'm about 20% into Song for a Whale. I read maybe an hour and a half. I walked my dog, and now I'm going to go to a trivia night and... Hopefully my team wins. There's gonna be supposedly a blue concoction margarita, so. I have made it back home. We tied for second place. <laughs> so, out of four teams. So we didn't do that great. We lost by like three points. And the last one was a Twitter battle of like who had the most followers and I should have been more forceful about my answers. I had like inklings and I, I was like, no, you guys are right. When we know I'm like a Twitter obsessed, needs help person. Does Sammy miss me? Did he miss me? He miss me. Oh. Hi everyone. It is day two now. Today's Saturday and I just finished Song for a Whale. I think I'm gonna end up giving it three stars. I really like the characters in the story and especially the main character. I think she was really strong. Um, I think I, I really understood her. I liked how um, deaf culture came through in this book. Um, and in the acknowledgments, the author speaks about being an interpreter in public schools for the deaf. And so I think there's a good background here. I really liked um, her parents. I think there was, especially with the relationship between her and her dad, there's layers to it, which I liked. So in general, the characters were really good. I think what I, I couldn't do here is I could not suspend the disbelief of her actually helping this whale. I wanted this to be more realistic fiction, and I do think it is set in a real world. It's set here and now, but I think that you are, you're supposed to not think too critically about could this actually happen in real life? This, I, in my opinion, could not happen in real life. But overall, I did like it, and I did enjoy the science uh, bent in the story. There's lots of stuff here about radios and hertz, um, and uh, acoustic biology and um, helping animals and I liked all those aspects of it as well. So this is what I think is going to be on the plate for the rest of the day. I'm going to hopefully read Jane's and the Giant Peach. I have this on audiobook. I'm going to go take my dog for a walk and listen to this and then maybe later in the day I can start and finish Love That Dog which I also have on audiobook. And maybe I can put in there a couple graphic memoirs maybe we have hidden which is about the holocaust or little white duck which is about growing up in china in the 1970s i have two other graphic novels which are fiction and that's click and sanity and Tallulah. um this one looks really cute and then don't forget sweep gotta read that too what do you think
We should go for a walk before it snows, huh? I'm I'm very cold. It feels like 10 degrees outside. But don't worry, guys. There are people in the hot tub right now as snowflakes are falling on their head. It's great. It's been a few hours since I updated. It's really been a reading day. I'm happy for it. I finished Jane's and the Giant Peach on audiobook and I liked it. I thought it was okay, but I think I had a different conception about what the story was going to be about. I did not expect human-sized like insects to appear and start talking, um, and I think that kind of took away from my enjoyment of the book. I can't. <laughs> I can't get into a story that has like insects for main characters. I don't know. It's hard for me. I will say the audiobook was really good and the way that it was produced, it had like sound effects and it had like production value. I really liked the audiobook narration and um, production. I digress. I've moved on to other things. I started and finished Kid Gloves by Lucy Nicely. I would not recommend this to kids in middle school. This is uh, an adult graphic novel memoir about Lucy Nicely going through pregnancy and delivering her baby and all of the complications that came from that. It also looks at like cultural, political, social ideas about pregnancy and maternal health, all kinds of stats and history on that. I really, really enjoyed it. I, I gave a nice little sob at the end because of how it ended. It was very like traumatic what she went through. I might do a whole video where I just talk about Lucy Nicely books and my favorites. Um, that might be fun. So yeah, I enjoyed it. So I started on my walk. I just walked Sam and it was freaking cold. I was listening to Red Scarf Girl by Ji Li Jang and that is about the Cultural Revolution. I also have this book about growing up in China in the 70s. I don't know if that's when the Cultural Revolution happened. I'm learning here. Um, but this might be good to read kind of in conjunction with that audiobook. There's nobody here. My boyfriend's out of town and that's why I've been updating so much. So, yeah! I finished two graphic novels. One is This Little White Duck. This is a childhood in China and it tells eight short stories in graphic form about growing up in China in the late 70s into the 80s. It talks about a variety of things like uh, this young girl's reaction to Mao Zedong's death and how her whole community really mourned for him. Um, it talks about the celebrations that her and her family would do during the Lunar New Year. Um, it talks about the four pests which are animals and insects that are bothering the farms. So just a bunch of little vignettes of her growing up. Um, she also talks about going to the countryside and seeing how she is really a lot more well off than a lot of the kids in the countryside. And she could see it from her outfit in this coat with this little white duck on it. The author said that she wrote this and uh, her husband illustrated it because they wanted to show her daughter what it was like for the author to grow up in China. Really, really enjoyed the illustrations too. I think they fit the time period and the vibe and tone that they were looking for really well. And I'll show you a little bit of the pages. I also finished Hidden, a child's 
story from the Holocaust. This is a graphic novel that looks at a grandmother who is up late one night and her grandchild comes and the grandmother tells the grandchild her experiences growing up as a Jewish girl in France during the Nazi occupation of France and um, kind of how things deteriorated and changed over the years where they had to start wearing the Star of David, where they were kind of outcasted and humiliated in public space spaces. Then when people started being sent to concentration camps um, and work camps and just like her parents were. She got help from a neighbor and Good Samaritans to hide and that's how a lot of children evaded going to the camps. Her mindset and what she went through and then finally being reunited with um, her mother who did survive the camps. It's kind of a, a sad story but it's also an important story and I thought it was a good introduction to kids who are interested in learning about the Holocaust or who are at that stage in their lives where they should be learning about the Holocaust. Um, I think it could help pose a lot of great discussion between parents and families and in schools as well. I really like the art. It uses kind of this style where the heads are ginormous and I really like the faces anyway I really like this one as well I think this is going to be the final day of this vlog I kind of have vlogged a lot um, and I'm I'm losing my wind here today I made it to page 100 of the group read sweep my dog is losing his mind I'm really enjoying this so far I like went into it without any real expectations and it's really exceeding my expectations so far. It's very sweet and kind of the main character I'm really rooting for her. So I'm really enjoying this so far and I'd never heard of it before it was suggested as the group read. So shout out to Krista and Katie for selecting it because I'm I'm really enjoying it so far. I think I would recommend it to people who are looking for Harry Potter read-alikes at the library. It has some of the same kind of vibes, orphan child and adventures, and the setting also sort of reminds me of it. And it's very like full of grief and loss at the same time. Definitely it's a completely different story, but I'm getting kind of those vibes. I'm also probably a third or probably a third of the way through Red Scarf Girl. I'm really gonna focus on that one today. Hopefully I can finish that one today. And I started something else in the audiobook that's not middle grade. I think today's gonna be the last day for this. Um, that way I can wrap it up. And yeah, so far middle grade March is going great. I read a lot yesterday. Hopefully I can read a lot today before I have to go um, pick up my boyfriend from the airport. And I also should be doing some preparing for an interview that I have in the middle of next week. So. That sounds great to me. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog and I'll see you around. Bye bye.